This is Carlos Ghosn, a millionaire and former CEO of Nissan who once stood as a titan of the automotive industry. But behind the polished facade of corporate success lies a web of controversial sins that have rocked the business world to its core. Accused of financial misconduct, Ghosn's fall from grace has been nothing short of spectacular. And then there's the audacious escape, orchestrated in a manner befitting a Hollywood thriller. Gone allegedly fled Japan, hidden in a suitcase, evading authorities and leaving the world stunned by the brazenness of his getaway. This story is a wild ride. Carlos Ghosn, born on March 9, 1954, in Porto Velo, Brazil, faced health challenges early in life, prompting a move to Rio de Janeiro with his mother. However, his health did not fully recover, leading to a relocation to Beirut, Lebanon in 1960. There, he completed his secondary education at College Notre Dame de Jamhauer before pursuing further studies in Paris, graduating as an engineer from École Polytechnique in 1974 and École des Mines de Paris in 1978. Following his graduation in 1978, Ghosn embarked on an illustrious 18-year journey at Michelin, Europe's largest tire manufacturer. Initially, he underwent training and worked across various plants in France and Germany. By 1981, Ghosn assumed the role of plant manager in Le Puy en Valais, France, showcasing his leadership capabilities. Subsequently, in 1984, he was entrusted with heading the research and development division for Michelin's industrial tire segment. At the age of 30, in 1985, Ghosn's career trajectory took a significant turn as he was appointed as the chief operating officer of Michelin's South American operations, tasked with reviving the struggling division in Rio de Janeiro. Amidst Brazil's hyperinflation, Ghosn implemented innovative strategies, including the formation of cross-functional management teams. This multicultural experience laid the foundation for his cross-cultural management style and underscored the importance of diversity as a business asset. Ghosn's remarkable leadership led to the division's return to profitability within two years. Recognizing his talents, he was subsequently promoted to president and COO of Michelin North America in 1989, relocating to Greenville, South Carolina with his family. Gone's tenure saw him spearhead the restructuring efforts of the company following its acquisition of the Uniroyal Goodrich Tire Company. In 1996, Gone assumed the role of executive vice president overseeing purchasing, advanced research, engineering and development, powertrain operations, and manufacturing at Renault. Additionally, he took charge of Renault's South American division based in the Mercosur. Gone's transformation restructuring initiatives at Renault played a pivotal role in the company's profitability throughout 1997. His track record of success, established under Francois Michelin, was further solidified under the leadership of Renault's first CEO following privatization. In March of 1999, Renault and Nissan formed the Renault-Nissan Alliance, with Renault acquiring a 36.8% stake in Nissan in May of 1999. Gone. Already holding positions at Renault, joined Nissan as a COO in June of 1999, later becoming its president in June of 2000 and CEO in June of 2001. Nissan faced challenges, including a $20 billion debt and minimal profits in Japan. Gone's Nissan Revival Plan aimed for profitability by 2000, a 4.5% profit margin by 2002, and a 50% debt reduction. He pledged to step down if these goals were missed. The plan involved cutting 21,000 jobs, closing five plants, and restructuring suppliers. Gone challenged Japanese business norms, abolishing seniority-based promotions, and dismantling Nissan's Kiretsu system. Within a year, Nissan's net profit rose to $2.7 billion, reversing a $6.46 billion loss. By 2002, it was highly profitable, with operating margins exceeding 9%. All planned goals were met by March of 2002. In 2005, Ghosn became president and CEO of Renault. Investor Kirk Kerkorian sought a merger with Renault and Nissan, but GM rejected it. Ford offered Ghosn a CEO position, but he demanded both CEO and chairman roles, which Ford declined. Ghosn led Renault-Nissan into the electric car market, committing 4 billion euros. The Nissan LEAF, introduced in 2010, became a leading affordable electric car. After the 2011 earthquake, Ghosn oversaw Nissan's recovery efforts, 
He later served at Avto VAZ and resigned as Nissan CEO in 2017, remaining chairman. As of November 2018, Renault owned 43.4% of Nissan, with Nissan holding non-voting shares equal to 15% of Renault's equity. Carlos Ghosn's career soared to unprecedented heights as he orchestrated remarkable turnarounds at both Renault and Nissan, leading them to newfound profitability and success. However, his trajectory took a dramatic turn when legal issues began to surface. Despite his exceptional leadership and strategic prowess, Gone found himself entangled in a web of controversy and allegations. And all of this started on November 19, 2018. On November 19, 2018, Tokyo District Prosecutors arrested Gone at 4.30 p.m. upon his re-entry into Japan aboard a private jet that had come from Lebanon for questioning over allegations of false accounting. Gone's top aide, Greg Kelly, a Nissan director and former head of human resources, was also arrested upon his arrival from the U.S. that day. On the same day, Nissan chief executive Hiroto Saikawa announced a press conference that Gone had been dismissed from Nissan's board and would be stripped of executive rights at a meeting to be held on November 22nd. Saikawa stressed that the dismissal was the result of an internal inquiry by Nissan and alleged that Gone and Kelly had underreported their compensation, a violation of securities law, and used company assets for personal use. While the allegations remained unproven in court, with due legal process pending, at the same news conference, Saikawa expressed disappointment, indignation, and despair at Gone's conduct, which included using company funds for personal investments and misusing corporate assets, and also said, This is an act that cannot be tolerated by the company. It is sufficient grounds for his dismissal. Although the company did not provide details, reports in the Japanese media stated that Nissan was paying all or some of the costs at some amount of 18 million U.S. dollars for residences used by Gone in Rio de Janeiro, Beirut, Paris, and Amsterdam, and that Gone charged family vacation expenses to the company. The purchases of some of these residences and the payment of expenses were handled by a shell company named Zai A Capital BV based in the Netherlands, which Kelly had instructed Nissan's board to set up to make venture investments at the end of 2010, around the same time as Gone's divorce from his first wife and beginning of a relationship with his second wife. Nissan funds were used to purchase Gone's Paris apartment in 2005, and Zai A funds were used to purchase his $5 million beachfront Rio apartment in 2012 and his Beirut mansion, which with renovations cost over $15 million. Nissan compliance auditors began to track Zai A activity in 2014, but were stymied at first by the chain of shell companies used by Zai A investments. Furthermore, Ghosn, in an attempt to evade reporting the full extent of his compensation with Nissan's financial statements, which became mandatory under Japanese law in 2010, instructed Kelly to devise complex deferred payment schemes. These arrangements were not disclosed, following an aggressive interpretation of disclosure regulations that Nissan's external auditors had not approved. The undisclosed amounts totaled approximately $80 million by the time of Gone's arrest eight years later. Gone claimed during investigations that he had instructed Kelly to handle the compensation reporting legally, while Kelly stated that he followed guidance from external law firms and the Financial Services Agency. There were leaks suggesting that Gone planned to call for a vote to dismiss Nissan CEO Saikawa and reinstate Kelly, who had semi-retired to the U.S. in 2015 during an upcoming board meeting. Gone was detained at the Tokyo Detention House as per Japanese regulations, allowing suspects to be held for up to 23 days without formal charges. Both Gone and Kelly were reportedly arrested based on information provided by an unidentified non-Japanese executive in Nissan's legal department as part of only the second deal struck under Japan's recently introduced plea bargaining system. Charges were formally filed against Gone and Kelly on December 10th for underreporting deferred compensation, leading to an additional 10-day period of detention without bail. Nissan also took possession of the Rio and Beirut properties, changing the locks, which prompted Gone's family to file a lawsuit seeking access. On December 21st, 2018, Gone faced rearrest on suspicion of transferring personal losses of $16.6 million to Nissan via a personal swap contract during the 2008 financial crisis. These new charges prevented Gone's release on bail the same day, extending his detention for an additional 10 to 20 days before a bail hearing. 
Reports later connected this charge to Ghosn's dealings with Sheikh Khaled Al Jafali, involving indirect payments from Nissan to a Jafali company. Ghosn's aide, Kelly, was not implicated in this transaction and was subsequently released on bail on December 25th. Ghosn's first public appearance after his arrest occurred on January 8th, 2019, during his arraignment where he proclaimed his innocence against the main allegations. However, his request for release on bail was denied. On January 11, 2019, Ghosn faced indictment on two additional charges, prolonging his imprisonment. Nissan's investigation also uncovered that Ghosn had paid himself an undisclosed $8 million in 2018 from a joint venture owned by Nissan and Mitsubishi, further complicating his legal situation. Despite appealing the denial of bail and offering additional gestures for his release, including wearing an ankle bracelet and posting Nissan stock as collateral, Ghosn's efforts were unsuccessful. His wife, Carol, publicly protested against his treatment and detainment, but bail was denied again on January 21, 2019. Some media reports have raised concerns about the fairness of the Japanese judicial system, citing the term hostage justice to describe Gon's situation. On January 11, 2019, Jose Munoz, Nissan's chief performance officer and head of its China operations, resigned from the company. Munoz, seen as a close ally of Ghosn and a potential successor at Renault and Nissan, had come under scrutiny in Nissan's internal investigation and was reportedly uncooperative. There was speculation that Nissan might eliminate the chairman position altogether following a trend seen in other Japanese companies facing scandals. Reports suggest that Nissan might pursue legal action against Ghosn personally. Initially, the French government and Renault supported Ghosn, maintaining his innocence until proven guilty. However, on January 16th, France's financial minister, Bruno Le Maire, indicated that Renault might consider appointing a new CEO in light of Ghosn's ongoing detention. Renault feared a potential power shift within the alliance, with Nissan taking advantage of Ghosn's absence to reshape the balance of power. Following pressure from the French government and the rejection of his bail requests in Japan, Ghosn eventually agreed to step down. He resigned as chairman and CEO of Renault on January 24, 2019. On January 30, 2019, Ghosn denounced the charges as a plot and treason orchestrated by Nissan executives opposed to the relationship with Renault and a proposed integration plan involving Nissan, Mitsubishi, and Renault. In mid-February 2019, Ghosn's lead counsel, Matanari Atsuru, stepped down, and Junichiro Hironaka, known for his success in high-profile cases, took over as Ghosn's lawyer. In early March of 2019, Ghosn's new legal team under Hironaka secured his release on bail from a Tokyo court, marking his third bail request. Bail was set at 1 billion yen, approximately $9 million US, subject to strict conditions. Ghosn was prohibited from leaving the country and had to reside at a specified address under constant camera surveillance, with no access to the internet. He regained his freedom on March 6, 2019. On April 3, 2019, Ghosn announced via Twitter his intention to reveal the truth and scheduled a conference for April 11, 2019. However, he was arrested for the fourth time early on April 4, 2019, on fresh suspicions of financial misconduct related to alleged dealings involving Oman. Ghosn condemned his arrest as outrageous and arbitrary. By this point, he had been detained for 108 days since his initial arrest in November of 2018. During an extraordinary shareholders meeting on April 8, 2019, Nissan shareholders voted to remove Ghosn from the company's board. They also voted to oust Greg Kelly, Ghosn's former right-hand man, and appointed Renault chairman Jean-Dominique Senard as a director. The following day, Ghosn posted a YouTube video proclaiming his innocence and denouncing the accusations against him as biased and distorted. He claimed that payments to Jafali were aimed at resolving a dispute with a local distributor and facilitating a bank contract to convert his salary to U.S. dollars to mitigate currency fluctuations. Despite appeals from Ghosn's legal team, a Japanese court approved a 10-day detention period until April 22, 2019. He was released from detention in late April, but remained under strict house arrest, including a four-month period during which he was forbidden from contacting his wife. But on December 30th, 2019, multiple media sources reported that Ghosn had fled Japan and arrived in Beirut, Lebanon. 
Gohn later confirmed this through a statement released by his representative in New York. In the statement, Gohn asserted that he refused to be subject to what he described as a biased Japanese justice system that presumed guilt, tolerated discrimination, and violated basic human rights. But how exactly did he do it? Gohn departed from his Tokyo apartment around 2.30 p.m. on December 29, 2019, and met with two individuals at a nearby hotel. They then traveled by bullet train from Shinagawa to Osaka and checked into a hotel near Kansai International Airport around 8 o'clock p.m. Gon's extraction team noticed that Japanese security personnel did not follow him into hotels, making his escape easier. A few hours later, two individuals left the hotel carrying large containers, including one with an audio equipment box where Gon was concealed. They boarded a Bombardier Global Express private jet with Turkish registration TCTSR. The oversized box containing Gone was not screened by customs officials as it couldn't fit inside the X-ray machine. The plane departed from Kansai Airport at 11:10 p.m., landing at Istanbul at a Turk airport at 5:26 a.m. on December 30th, 2019. Within an hour of landing, another private jet departed for Beirut. An employee at the Turkish private jet operator, MNG Jet, admitted to falsifying passenger records for the operation. The Lebanese ambassador to Japan, Nadal Yahaya, denied the embassy's involvement in Gon's escape, but emphasized the importance of Gon's adhering to the conditions of his release, as determined by the Tokyo Criminal Court. After Carlos Gon arrived in Lebanon, a Tokyo court approved Japanese prosecutors' request to revoke his bail. Despite both countries being Interpol members with diplomatic ties, there's no extradition agreement between Japan and Lebanon. Consequently, Interpol issued a red notice for Gon's arrest. Japanese authorities raided Gon's Tokyo apartment on January 2, 2020, searching for evidence. Addressing speculation about his family's involvement in his escape, Gon refuted the claims as inaccurate. However, on January 7, 2020, Japanese prosecutors issued an arrest warrant for his wife, Carol Gohn, for allegedly providing false testimony during an April 2019 court hearing. Gohn held a press conference on January 8, 2020, where he detailed his imprisonment conditions, asserting his innocence, and accused Nissan executives of orchestrating his downfall. He described his departure from Japan as fleeing injustice and political persecution. Lebanese prosecutor Judge Ghassan Uyadat imposed a travel ban on Gon the next day. Following his escape, Gon's Japanese defense team, including lawyer Junichiro Hironaka, resigned en masse, citing surprise at his actions. On February 10, 2020, Gon enlisted former Disney president Michael Ovitz as his Hollywood agent. Nissan filed a $90 million lawsuit against Gon on February 12, 2020, alleging corrupt behavior. Additionally, Japan's financial regulators fined Nissan $22 million on February 29, 2020, for underreporting remuneration to Gon and other executives. Reports also surfaced of payments related to Gon's escape, with $862,500 allegedly transferred from a Paris bank account to a company linked to one of his accomplices. Gon's residence in Lebanon sustained damage in the August 2020 Beirut explosion, which occurred nearby. In November of 2020, Lebanon's Prosecutor General decided not to charge Gon for his 2008 visit to Israel, as the statute of limitations had expired. This visit had previously sparked controversy due to Lebanon's adherence to the Arab League boycott of Israel. Nissan also terminated its global general counsel, Ravinder Pasi, who claimed to have exposed mishandling of the Gon case within the company. On November 23, 2020, a United Nations panel of human rights experts declared Carlos Ghosn's arrest and detention in Japan as fundamentally unfair. The panel, known as the Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, recommended that the Japanese government provide Ghosn with compensation and other reparations for the conditions of his arrest and detention in November of 2018. Despite the Nelson Mandela rules stipulating a 15-day limit on solitary confinement, Gone was held for 108 days, while Greg Kelly and the Taylors were held in solitary for over 100 days each. William Cleary, an expert in Japanese law, described the handling of the Gone case, including that of Greg Kelly and the Taylors, as an aberration. 
In December of 2020, it was reported that French investigators would meet with Ghosn in January of 2021 as part of a separate investigation into expenses covered by a Dutch subsidiary of Renault and Nissan. Ghosn is subject to two investigations in France. One focuses on suspicious transactions between Renault and a distributor in Oman, while the other probes alleged illegal payments for private trips and events funded by Renault-Nissan's Netherlands-based holding company, RNBV. In a January of 2021 interview, Ghosn questioned why France was pursuing charges against him, while Japan did not, vehemently denying the allegations. In April of 2022, France issued an international arrest warrant for Ghosn, along with four others associated with the Omani company, Suhail Bawan Automobiles. They were accused of aiding Ghosn in diverting millions of dollars of Renault funds for personal use, including buying a 120-foot yacht. Ghosn questioned the timing of the warrant, calling it suspicious, and expressed his desire to face trial to clear his name. In October of 2023, a Lebanese court ordered Ghosn and his wife to leave their $19 million residence in Ashrafith, Beirut within a month. This ruling came four years after Foynos Investment accused him of illegally occupying the property. Ghosn appealed the decision, arguing that the company had ties to Nissan and that he had a legal agreement with Nissan allowing him to reside there. In February of 2024, four Nissan employees were charged with stealing documents, files, and electronic devices from Ghosn's residence and office in Beirut. On January 30, 2020, Japanese prosecutors issued arrest warrants alleging that the escape plan was coordinated by former U.S. Army Special Forces soldier Michael Taylor, a private security contractor with extensive connections in Lebanon. The warrants also implicated Taylor's son, Peter Maxwell Taylor, and another American named George Antoine Zayak in the operation. Michael Taylor had previously conducted similar international rescue missions. On May 8, Turkey charged seven individuals accusing of aiding Ghosn's escape through Istanbul to Lebanon. Subsequently, on May 20, U.S. authorities arrested Michael and Peter Taylor on suspicion of assisting Ghosn's flight. On October 30, 2020, the U.S. agreed to extradite the Taylors to Japan. In June of 2021, Michael and Peter Taylor pleaded guilty in Tokyo to their involvement in Ghosn's escape from Japan in December of 2019. They expressed remorse and apologized to the Japanese authorities. It was disclosed that Ghosn paid the Taylors over $1 million for their services, utilizing bank transfers and Bitcoin payments. In July of 2021, the Taylors were convicted and sentenced in Japan for aiding Ghosn. Michael received a two-year prison sentence, while his son was sentenced to 20 months. In October of 2022, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Prisons transferred the Taylors to the United States after an agreement between the two governments to allow them to serve the remainder of their sentences in the U.S.